Welcome everybody. Today it will be your yoga stretch class. So all we need to do is to be careful. Careful about how we align. So the proper form is always the most important part of your practice. Plus the breathing, of course. So when you're ready, find a comfortable seat. You can have your legs crossed or just join the feet together in front of you. Knees to the side, closing your eyes, and then start breathing, lifting your shoulders as you inhale, and sliding them down as you exhale. Slowing down the fluctuation of your mind. Just concentrate on being within your body and with your breath. Reverse those circles. And then come back, opening your eyes, interlace the fingers behind your head. And then open your elbows wide and then slowly start bringing your chin towards your clavicle bones. Lifting those elbows up and then moving your head slightly side to side. And then come down back to the center, look down and bring your elbows in. And then slowly lift those elbows up. Keep going. And lift. And exhale as you bring them down. And inhale, open. And then start moving, adding your spine. So round everything in like in a cat-cow stretch. Bringing those elbows together. And then inhale, lift those elbows and lift your tailbone up, open your chest. And go slowly. And go. And again. And up. And down. And one last time. Stay open. Keep lengthening through the, through the sides of your waist. Your spine is long and straight. And then slowly turn to one side. And then come back to the center. And turn to that opposite side. Keep going, using your breath. Breathe good. And then inhale, open the chest, looks like in front of you, and start looking forward just a tiny little bit. You want to extend all the way from your tailbone, all the way to the crown of your head, looking slightly down. And then open your arms to the side, interlacing the fingers behind your back, opening the chest a little bit more. And then come a little lower as you look down. Maybe you'll be able to bring your head down. Oh no, it's okay. Shaking your head. And then ready. Slowly bringing yourself all the way up. Stretching those shoulders. So you may want to change the crossing of your leg. And then giving yourself a hug. Start lifting those shoulders up and lower. Go slowly. You need to discover what is happening in those shoulder joints first. And then you feel you're ready, you can join the palms of your hands and having your arms crossed in an eagle wrap and keep going, lifting and lowering. Every inhale lengthens you and every exhale leads you lower down and down and lower. Adding that cat cow stretch if it feels good. And then little circles, little circles with your elbows here. And reversal. And then back here. Open 
open your arms wide and then switch the crossing of your arms. Lifting as you inhale and lowering your elbows as you exhale. Keep moving your spine accordingly. Inhale and inhale and exhale out. Adding that eagle wrap if lifting your practice. Little circles, with those elbows, very small, tiny little movements, making sure everything feels good, and then reversing. And coming back to the top. Interlacing the fingers in front of you, pressing up with the palms of your hands, and then opening your arms overhead. And then take it to your little side bend. You really want to press down with your opposite sitting bone as you extend, feeling a nice stretch all the way from your hip, all the way to the side of your waist and of upper body and your arms. All the way, all the way to your legs. And then come back and sit. Your chest stays open. Both shoulders are in one line, one plane. And then come back. And then slowly roll those shoulders back. Easy cat cow stretch here. And inhale. And then stretch. And inhale. And exhale. And up. And then come back to the center and then slowly bring your feet together. Your feet are together, joining the soles of your feet and the knees are apart. Try to bring your heels a little closer to your hips or to your seat. And then slowly inhale. Inhale and lengthen and then tilt forward. And then bring those elbows in front of your shins. If it's not available to you, you can make your hands and just hold your shins with your hands. It will help you to use it as a leverage to open and extend from your tailbone all the way to the crown of your head. And then slowly keep going, keep going. Keep tilting forward, tilting forward, extending. And when you think that you have reached your destination, just look down and drop your head. Drop your head and stay. This is your Bada Konasana. Opening your hips, finding more space, finding more freedom. And then slowly come back and then hug your knees together. Bring your hands behind you. And then just feet are right apart as you bring your knees side to side just to find a little relaxing feeling in those hips. And then come and find your pillow. Find your pillow to sit on it. Sit on the pillow. If you have a block, the block will be fine too. It'll do. And then slowly, this is what we call rock your baby pose. So you have different options here. First option is your one knee is bent and grab a hold of your foot with your opposite hand and hold your knee with that same side hand. And then just rock, rocking in your heels. So that's option one. Option two would be hugging the knee with your arm and lifting that shin a little higher. So that pillow is helping us to stay upright. So we're not sinking, we're staying upright here. And then option three, taking the foot to the crease of your opposite hand, and then just join your hands and drop the feet. Rocking your shin, pretending it's a little happy baby. <clears throat> When you're ready, hold that foot up. Carefully place your heel 
to the crease of your opposite leg and support your knee. Support your knee. So you don't want to take that knee down right away. Just see what happens. Maybe it will be enough to stay here and find new horizons, new space in your head. And then slowly allow the gravity to take that knee down. If it allows it, if it doesn't allow it, don't force it. So that's your half lotus pose. And you may feel a little tension in your head, coming all the way from your head towards your front thigh muscles and towards your knee. So you may want to help it by taking your hand and slide it down, telling yourself everything's fine. Then you are ready to do that. Slowly and carefully get me up and uncross your legs and change. Change on the sides, finding your foot with your opposite hand. And just rock. Stay here, perfectly fine. You're lubricating that hip joint. Very important. Eventually, you will be able to have that knee with your arm. And possibly take that foot to the crease of your opposite hip. And again, try to extend, extend from your tailbone all the way to the crown of your head, lengthening your spine, lengthening your spine, and drop side to side. Holding that heel up. Placing it to the crease of your opposite hip and supporting your knee as it slowly folds down on its own using only the gravity, no pressing. You're just sliding your hand from your hip all the way towards your knee. And again, try to extend. So you make to put an extra attention into extending, extending, and lengthening your spine. When ready, lay that knee up and open the legs to the side. So both legs are extended. Take your hands at your hips and squeeze your elbows together. And then flex your toes. Flex your toes. Flexing your toes, as you do that, you will feel activation in your inner thighs. And actually, this is how you protect your inner thigh muscles because you don't want to overextend. So when your feet are not are asleep here, you're not protecting yourself enough. So flex your toes, squeeze your elbows together, and open your chest. And staying upright here is already challenging enough. So if you don't feel any need to go any further, stay here. If you want to be a little bit more adventurous, <laughs> you can come and slowly turn a little bit more. And again, keep extending. So now the extension of your spine is important. You don't want to allow to, uh, to any rounding. No rounding. So your tailbone's up. Your shoulder blades are squeezing together. So you're creating a concavity between them. And your neck is long. And maybe you can come a little further. Some of you will want to extend your arms in front of you and maybe walk them a little bit further off. Just don't go too far, please. Or observe your own sensations, particularly the feeling in your inner thighs. It can be quite challenging. So be careful and be patient. You can also use your Four arms to support your side. And just breathe, you know, if you feel that stretch, it should not be a sharp pain, it should be a challenging stretch. Close your eyes, concentrate and breathe into that spot, sending your breath into that spot when you feel that extension, that stretch. And then slowly as you press into your hands down. And 
open one knee to the side. If you're using a strap, now it would be a good time to find it. And then one knee is, one knee is bent and one leg is extended. So you want to open your chest so it's more aligned towards that extended leg. And then take that step and place it right around, right around that foot. And again, first you want to extend because this is our start. So before you go anywhere, we want to prepare. So usually we kind of sink like that because the gravity is just doing it to us. So in order to find that all energy, press into your sitting bones. Lift your tailbone up and open your chest. Bend your elbows to the side and start pulling yourself forward. And again, you already may feel a lot of stress underneath your knee or maybe in your hamstring. So it is fine to stay here and breathe. Maybe close in your eyes and breathe into that stress. Don't go any further. If you want to go further, however, then you have to find that alignment one more time. Lift, lift, and then continue as you exhale. So inhale, your inhale is extending you, preparing you for the journey. And your exhale is closing you down. If you feel it's too much, just come back and enjoy where you are. And slowly come and switch. So one leg's extended, your upper body is adjusting. So you turn your upper body to be more aligned <clears throat> with your extended leg. And then again, prepare first, prepare. And maybe stay. Inhale, lengthen and exhale. See if you can pull yourself a little bit more forward towards that extended leg. If not, stay. And again, be patient. Think about arriving to a new destination. So first, you need to find out if you like it there. Also, you have to find out if you like it there so much that you want to explore further. And if you do, don't forget to extend first as you inhale and then exhale. And if you think that you took it too far, just come back a little bit and enjoy being where you are. And count your knees now. Yeah. And take this pillow. So now you're tucking your knees. Uh, I'm tucking your toes, I don't know what it is. Uh, tucking your toes, and then uh, maybe sitting in those heels. If it's too much, too much for you, you may find it helpful to use your pillow to sit on a pillow. Stretching those big toes, I know it's challenging. When you're ready, slowly come to your hands and knees. Flatten your feet so the top of your feet is now placed on your mat. And see how those heels are splitting to the side. So you may want to reach for your heels and squeeze those heels together. And then sit in those heels again. And same thing, if it's too much, you may want to start with your pillow. With your pillow, sitting on that pillow as you are stretching the top of your feet, very important, and your ankles, very important, 
for you to maintain the ability to walk. And also very important for your balance, of course. And then you ready to slowly count your hands and toes. Keep your pillow nearby. And again, if you're using a block, that's equally the same, you know, good help. And uh, now bring your feet together and come to a plank. You're in plank. Then bring one knee in. And keep your other foot with your toes tucked in. So you are reaching back with your heel. You're reaching back with your heel to find that extension. So it can be a little challenging. Again, you are welcome to use a pillow to sit on that pillow, just supporting that front hip, that hip that belongs to your bent knee. And then as you already extend that foot, that back foot, Turn your toes, back toes in, and let that back heel to fall to the side. And then slowly come, and count your elbows, and then go your head, and have your head resting in your forearm. That's your pigeon pose. Pressing into your hands, come all the way up and take that foot into low lunge. Same foot, same foot. We are in low lunge here. And then slowly drop your knee down, the back knee goes down, and then drag that front hip back and flex your toes. And as you drag out the hip back, take that hip back, only that front hip back. To align and then bring your head down. That's your half split. Ardha Hanumasana, Ardha Hanumasana, half split pose. Coming to Anjanasana, slowly bring your <clears throat> uh, chest up, arms into cactus. And then press forward with your head. So that's your level one. Level two, tuck your back toes in and lift that knee up. Reaching out with your heel, that's what's going to help you to extend your back. And then slowly come down. Stay in that low lunge. Take your hands from the inside of your front foot and stay here. You can drop your hips a little bit more if it's available to you. And if it's even more available, you can come to your elbows, coming to your lizard pose. And then just breathe into your hips. Breathing into those hips. And again, see how that back knee wants to drop down. So extend that leg by pressing into your back heel. And then as you press in here, come back and come back to plank, holding that plank just for a little bit. And then we'll let your other leg up, bend that knee and come to Kapotasana Pigeon Pose. So that knee is in between your legs. Again, using your pillow if you need it to support your head. And then extend that back leg by pressing into your heel. So this is at the same time is going to level our hips. Level our hips and then extend your foot. Heel is out and the toes are in. And then rest. 
Resting your head in your elbows. And breathe. into your hands, come up, take the front foot into a lunge, and then bend your knee, and take it to that half sway, Adha Hanumasana, lifting your toes, and then dragging that back hip, or that front hip, sorry, front hip back, front hip back, so your front hip goes back, and you can drop your head towards your knee. And then slowly come to the middle, tuck your back toe in and come to that Anjanasana. So you first may start on your knee down and then just lift your chest and press your hips forward. For a little bit more, tuck your back toes in and lift, reaching out with that back heel. Breathe in. And then slowly come down. Slowly calm down. And then take it to that lizard. So your hands are from the inside of your front foot. Back knee is up. You're reaching with your heel. Staying here or going all the way down on your elbows. And breathe in. And then slowly as you press into your hands, come to plank. And then from plank, take it all the way down to your knees and child's pose. Dropping your head, staying in a child's pose. your heart rate, expanding your chest as you inhale. And slowly bring yourself up to find a comfortable seat. Thank you all for joining me today. Have a beautiful rest of your day. It's been a real pleasure to have you watching my show. Namaste.